Right, grade sixes, so the word inequalities is just a quick new word, and that's actually the word for bigger than or smaller than. When you listen to the word inequality, what do you hear? You, what's the base of the word, if you think of it in English? Ben? It's not equal to. It's not equal to. Good, because in equality stands for equal, and in means not. Just like invisible means not visible. Anyway, so these things are not equal to some. You already know this. So 7 would be smaller than 9 or less than. So just if you, co you have to copy this down. So this stands for less than. Yes, you must copy this down. And the other way around, 10 is larger than 3. That also is greater than, greater than. And I showed you that nice video about the crocodile, the hungry alligator, what's it? Uh, it's the number that is greater. So it always, go, um, the open mouth points to the bigger number. Okay. Now, maybe I can teach you something new around this, and that is that you also get... No, let's stop there firstly. I'm not going to... I'll teach you that in grade 7. Next, we're going to write order of operations as our next little heading. And what am I referring to? What's the rule you've learned when you have to decide on the order of your operations? Bod mass. Bod mass. Good. And let's align here. Let's just do that. So you know your bot mass rule, and I'm going to write down the bot mass rule now. And use a color that you can read. You can write this in print and do one in each line so we can do them underneath each other bod mass one per line okay. so b stands for brackets and we do brackets inside out what that means and um, I'm going to make a side note and scribble here and you don't have to copy what I'm writing now I'm going to erase it in a moment but I just want to show you inside out means if we have four times 3 plus um, 3 minus 1. What have I got in that? Some, you see I've got brackets inside of brackets? I've seen it Of course. But brackets inside of brackets hatches like an egg. From the inside out. Okay. So now what part of the sum do I do first? I do the brackets first. And which brackets do I then do first? Start in the middle. So that's the, yes, Raka? The three minus the one. The three minus the one. So I'm going to write the sentence over and I'm going to say three plus two. And now it's already looking better. Okay. Now I can do three plus two is five. And there you have your, your sum. But I'm going to, no, you know what? You can copy that there. That looks nice. Mm. Do the little bubble. Okay, so that is inside out. Sometimes when in maths they put brackets within brackets, they also like to use 
a different type of bracket each time. So let's say they use these rounded or curved brackets for three minus one. They may make this brackets like that, like a small square like bracket. Um, but we don't use that in the textbook at this point. The O stands for of sums. And of sums look like this. A quarter of 20. Can you remember how to do them? You take the big number, the 20. You divide by the bottom times by the top. So that means I'm going to say 20 divide by 4 is 5. And then if there, look, if there's a 1, anything times 1 stays the same. So it's not really necessary to times by the top if there's a 1. But I'm just going to put it in here so that if there's a 2 or a 3 that you remember, you do have to also then times by the top. Maybe we must write that down in words as well. Yes. Divide. This is a little rhyme you have to know out of your head. Divide by bottom. Times by top. And we're going to do this a million times this year. This is the sums in grade six that you will see the most of is of sums. That's what it says, yes. Divide by the bottom. I need a little line there. Times by the top. And this is going to point towards... Are you... If we write that down, what I can do is I can erase maybe that scribbles that's very small. Let's see if this looks a bit neater. How's that? Once we've made the notes today, tomorrow, ach, not tomorrow, on Monday, we will practice some botma sums and we'll, I'll teach you how to use the rules again. I know you've learned these rules before, but sometimes applying them still uh, remains a challenge. D stands for divide, and I'm just going to make a little divide symbol. And M stands for top. Right, so the D and the M stands for divide and multiply, but guys, they don't have to be done in that order. You do them from left to right. What that means, from left to right. Woo, that fitting in, yes. What that means is if I give you the sum... 10 times um, 6 divide by 3, for example. That just, um, this does not mean you have to do the 6 divide by 3 first. Okay. You can just work from left to right because times and divide are equally important. They are brothers or sisters. But they, um, the d divide is before multiply in the rule, but it's not more important. They go together. So you do all the timesing and dividing there is in one step and you can do them, you just work from left to right in the sum. Okay, so don't, you don't have to go do your divide before you do your multiply. We're going to do 10 times 6 is 60 and 60 divided by 3 is 20. Okay, I will erase that. And the next two, what are they? Good. 
addition and subtraction. And again, the same thing applies. They go from left to right. That means if I do a sum like 10 minus 4 plus 2, you could actually, uh, 10 minus 4 is 6 and 6 plus 2 is 8, right? Or, um, so you're not going to do 4 plus 2 is 6 and then say 10 minus 6 is 4. That's a different answer, right? So minusing and plusing is equally important. So if you see a sum with a bunch of minuses and pluses, you work from left to right. Okay. But what's very important is you go do your times and divides before you do your plus and minuses. That's where the difference comes in here. Times and divides always go before pluses and minuses. Okay, are you ready to do a few um, sums and practice this? Okay. So now you can write a little subheading called examples. Here's a nice long one. Hey. Nice. Lucky. Now, what you need to remember to do when we do long sums like this and we're applying our order of operations, you need to keep rewriting the sum. The worst thing you can do is to say, oh, what must I do first? Brackets, so 4 minus 1 is 3, and then you write a 3 there. That's going to mess up your whole sum. You must do the brackets first, and it is going to give you a 3. But you have to keep the 3 there, where the brackets is in the sum. And all the rest must stay where it is. So the first thing I want to remind you to do, later on when you get really good at this, you're going to do a few steps at the same time. But let's just do it one thing at a time for now. So... Keep the 20 times 4 divided by 2 plus, you've changed the bracket now to be a 3. So that's the only part you focused on right now. So I'm working, I know this is a bit slow, but this really helps to keep my order, my sum in order. Okay. From here, we can maybe speed things up a little. There's times, there's divide, there's plus, there's minus in that sum. What must I do first? Yes? Times. Well, um, yes, you're right, you're right, but you must do times and divide, hey? They're equally important. But, John Matisse is right, we are starting with the times because it's the first thing on the left. Okay, so we're going to do... The times and divide part, which means we can do this whole part first. Okay, all of it in one go. Well, I can use green then to write that part. So what is 20 times 4? 80. 80. What's 80 divided by 2? So all of that I did in one step. Now I need to keep all the rest where they were. So what else did I have? I had this plus. And I had the 3 minus 3. So it's still making a, sen a sentence. So you could... 
Um, what? Where was that cutting function? Anyway, you could now squeeze it in and put it together. I'm just showing you where everything was, but but I can just go right plus three minus three there now. Okay, do you see? I've kept everything else where it's supposed to be. And now, Sirocco, you were saying? Exactly. So you're saying, what's the use in saying 40 plus 3 is 43, and then saying 43 minus 3 is again 40, right? So th your shortcut now is to cancel those that plus 3 and that minus 3 out. Do I have to do the minus first or the plus first? It doesn't matter. They are equally important. In this case, I could work from left to right and say 40 plus 3 is 43, and then say 43 minus 3 is 40. But here I see a shortcut, and I'm going to use the shortcut. Okay. So the answer is 40. Guys, for bot mass sums... You have to work underneath each other. You cannot do a bot mass sum for me in one line. Okay. You're not saving paper. You're not saving space. We're anyway throwing the book away at the end of the year, whether it's empty or whether it's full. So, you are going to write it step for step underneath each other for now. Once you are trained and fit with this you're going to see you're going to do many steps in one and you're going to maybe just need two or three lines well two lines okay but what you shouldn't be doing is saying this equals and then you go oh four minus one is three and then you go to and and then you're going to say oh 20 times four is 80 and then you're going to say 80 divided by two is 40 what am i doing wrong here you can't even see what i'm doing can you I am working out the sum in my head, but the way I'm putting it on paper is wrong. Is 3 equal to 80 equal to 40? No. But did I, did I have to say 4 minus 1 is 3? Yes. Did I have to say, then say 20 times 4 is 80? Yes. Did I then have to say 80 divided by 2 is 40? Yes. But, guys... This is what I call abusing the equal sign. Do you see you're abusing it? Three is not the thing is the same as 80. If I promise you 80 rand and I give you a three rand, is that right? No. So you can't write it this way. This way is wrong. Okay. Another sum? Yes. We'll speed it up now. So this sum is going to be 4 plus, oh, I can use fancy brackets, 3 times 2 plus 1. So as I said, because I use brackets within brackets, I can make the inside brackets one type and then the outside brackets a different type if I want to. Times 3. Okay, let's see what is happening. First step. Brackets, right? Brackets work from the inside out. It hatches like an egg. So I'm going to start with the 2 plus 1, right? Yes. Further to keep things clear, I'm just going to keep everything else where it is for now. In other words, I'm going to rewrite. Is someone connected to the screen and then turns it? Okay, so it's a bit of extra writing out, but now the sum still reads nice and it's um, clearly and it's in order. And now I get to do my brackets again. Remember, I'm doing them inside out. So I've done the inside brackets. Now I do the outside brackets. So it's this part that I'm going to do now. And I'm still going to keep the rest where, where it is. Four plus three times three is? Okay, good. I always hope someone's going to shout six so that we can say to them, ah, ha, ha, you must listen, Ugh, you must focus. Good, you all knew it's nine, and that is three times three. Okay, next step. 
if I have a plus and a times in a sum, do I work from left to right? No. Nope. nope. Who's more important? Nine. Times. So I'm going to do that part first. What's 9 times 3? 27. Oh, what did I just choose? That's terrible. 4 plus 27. Oh, finally. That's easy. Right, so I know that 27 plus 3 will give me 30, and I'm just one extra for that. 51. Let's write distributive law. Fancy, hey? Distributive. No, that's wrong. Distributive law. It reminds you of the word? Of what word does it remind you? Distributive. What's the base of the word distributive? No, no, no. Yes? What does it start with? Distribute. You heard the word? You've, have you heard the word distribute? Distribute means to hand out to you and to you and to you. Okay? Who distributes these calculators? Cassio distributes them to all the shops in the Western Pack. Are you understanding the word? Okay. So distribute is to send to you and to you and to you to give it and send it to different places. Now, this law applies when you see this. Okay. Yes, we're used to doing brackets first, right? So if we're going to answer, if we want to quickly work this out, we can say 5 plus 8 is 13, right? And 13 times 3 is 39. Um, no, there is no times in there, but we do brackets before. But what's bothering you is that there's a 3 and it's right next to the bracket, hey? And you're right. What does that mean? It means the 3 must be times with whatever's in the bracket, okay? So when a number is glued to a bracket, it means times. There is no symbol, but we don't need to use a symbol. When a number stands right next to a bracket like that, it means... What does it mean? Times. Times. Okay. But what we're actually doing is we're distributing the three in, for everyone into the bracket. So this really actually also means three, look here, times five, and three times eight. Let's put the let's work those two out. Three times five is fifteen mm -hmm. and three times eight is twenty-four. 24. And what is fifteen plus twenty-four? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. So three with the five and the eight in the bracket. That means, or oh, that's the same as 3 times 5 plus 3 times 8. And that is the same as saying 3 times, what's 5 plus 8? 13. If you did the bracket first. All of these will give you 39. Now, the reason I'm showing you the distributive way instead of... This is obviously shorter, right? Mm -hmm. This times 13 is shorter. 
should be using this there the reason i'm showing you to distribute there instead of writing the shorter way there is because next year we're going to start algebra and in algebra oh, maybe i must just show you a quick little bit of algebra here i'm going to do this in algebra okay same thing except for you can't plus x and y x's are x's and y's are y's they they are two different terms so how can i make this sum look different or how can i change it what do we do we distribute the three to both parties right and that answer is then 3x plus 3y okay. you don't have to do this you know if you don't understand it it's fine leave it but that we're going for that that's why i'm teaching you just the basics of the distributive law i know it looks longer than the shortcuts you're used to but just understand that that's what something in front of a bracket can do okay and then i've got my last heading and that says inverse operations have you heard of that Inverse operation. I have ran out of colors, so I'm going to go back to red. So when I hear inverse operations, it sounds like, sounds like there's going to be the opposite operation on somebody. That's exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to use three numbers no yes three and i want you to choose three different colors for your three different numbers now okay i'm going to use red and blue and green so i'm making the number 220 in red then i am making the number 190 in blue and i'm making the number 30 in green if i start with 190 i can use the same numbers and write 190 now oh, i must focus here plus 30 guess what it'll give me 220 Same numbers, different order. You see. Next, I'm going to start again with 220. But I'm going to say minus 30. Guess what the answer is going to be there? 190. Going to be 190. And there's one more I can do. I wonder who can think, tell me what other way around I can write it. It's actually the same as one of the others. It's just other way around. Mateo? Christopher? Yes, if I just, I can swap those two. That's the other way around. It looks very much the same, but another fact family i can write there is 30 plus 190 and that's again going to give me these four are family family okay so we have used the inverse calculations each time, but by knowing what 220 minus 190 is, I was able to do to work out what 190 plus 30 is. I was able to see what 220 minus 30 will be, and so on. All we're going to do now is do a quick example of how this is handy.
going to give you some missing numbers now. 100 minus what gives me 40? I'm sure you can tell me out of your head. 100 minus what gives me 40? Six. Yes? 60. Must I pause for a bit so that you can finish copying? You're all telling me the answer is 60. Your brain did this so fast, you weren't even thinking what you were doing. But technically, what was your brain doing? How were you getting the 60 with those two numbers? What could you do with them to get 60? Yes? No, that gives me 114. Yes, Chalice? 100 minus 40. Yes, that's what your brain was doing. Tell it, well done, brain. You're one step ahead of me. Your brain did this. That's why immediately the answer of 60 came to mind. Okay. That's how you knew. So you used inverse. This sounds silly when I'm teaching it to you this way, but we're going to use the same trick for much larger numbers later on in the term. And then your brain's not going to jump with the answer for you. You'll have to use the method to figure it out. What if I do this? What plus 40 will give me 100? Answer? 60. Yes, Natalie? 60. 60, yes. And what did your brain do with 100 and a 40 to get it? It again said 100 minus a 40 is a 60. Do you see? Your brain uses inverse calculation all the time because you've practiced it so many times um, in the previous years. So well done. Now, I'm going to show you how this looks different with a larger number. So what if I give you 1,964 minus what? will give me 321. Yeah. Is the answer jumping out at you now? No. Not really. But you just remembered what method your brain has to use to figure that out. What must it do with the other two numbers? It was? It must minus them. So now we're just going to make a bit of effort and actually go and minus them. So we need to take the big one here minus the smaller one on that side right so i now know if i do that i'm going to get this answer 